Oh my goodness. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and today's video is going to be a reaction video, I guess. I've seen a number of these videos where somebody reacts to one-star reviews of books they really liked and I always think they're quite funny, especially when the person says, I like it for this reason and then somebody else says, I hate it for that same exact reason. I've picked four books to look at reviews for. Um, two of them I stand by being some of the best books of all time that anybody who questions that is kind of wrong. Um, and then two that I really enjoyed, but I also can see why some people would hate them uh, just to have a little variety. First up is a book I've discussed many, many times, and that is Yajiasi's Homegoing. Um, so I'm very curious to read negative reviews about this book. Homegoing spans 300 years of history, following two sisters who've never met. One is living in Ghana, and the other one was born in Ghana, but then was enslaved and brought to the United States and it follows their descendants going back and forth. I absolutely adore this book. I've discussed it before, so I'll link a video for that below. Okay, on Goodreads, Homegoing has an overall score of 4.5, uh, sorry, 4.47. So obviously I am not in the minority thinking that this is just an incredible book. This is a two-star review and they say, ambitious story about slavery with themes of finding one's voice, forgiveness, moving on, etc. Absolutely. The writing style of jumping from continent to continent and era to era is just not to my taste. I think there would have been a stronger novel just focusing on Marjorie, for example, perhaps with her inherited family stories and independent investigations and interpretations. That part felt authentic and interesting. As it is, there are too many shallow characters, vignettes that don't ring true. Before you accuse me of sexism and racism for this review, please look at all my reviews and see that I give low scores, and for the same reason, to white males, and that I give high scores to non-whites and females. It's kind of an interesting and unnecessary disclaimer, but okay. It is a family saga that intentionally follows the lineage um, of these two matriarchs. The continent jumping is interesting as a complaint because that is kind of the core of the story. Marjorie that this reviewer mentions, I guess that's kind of a bit of spoiler, but she is one of the two most recent generations um, and she's a university student who is retracing her roots. This is just kind of a strange criticism because it sounds like the reviewer doesn't like family sagas and doesn't like historical fiction, so it makes a lot of sense that they wouldn't have liked this book. Another two-star review, um, this reviewer says, this book was really disappointing. From the reviews and the synopsis, I expecting something along the lines of roots. Instead, each chapter is devoted to one character per generation. There was no satisfying conclusion to any character's storyline. True, um, I think that's also kind of the point. We have these two family lines where their circumstances influence their ability to know what happened to the previous generation, especially in the storyline that is brought to the United States. Oftentimes with chattel slavery, the children were taken away from their parents and neither the parents nor the child ever knew what happened. Um, so in that regard, Yajiasi has just ended the narrative for many of the characters, leaving you as the reader completely in the dark as the character would have been. So I guess, yes, the reviewer is correct um, in that statement, but I think it's intentional. I also think the expectation of this book to be similar to Roots is kind of a trap that we fall into to expect that certain genres or certain stories will be the same, um, specifically in this instance to expect that Black authors write in the same way when it comes to slavery and ancestry. Um, so that's a little bit interesting and something that I think is an easy trap to fall into and something that we should be very much aware of, especially those of us who read a lot of historical fiction, literary fiction that discusses colonialism, enslavement, and the ramifications today. Okay, last one for Homegoing. This one is a little bit of a longer review, and I think they are reflecting on their own reading tastes, which I like. 
Um, so the reviewer says, I think this is the point where I admit I'm not much of a literary fiction reader and I stop forcing myself to read it. I'll still try to push myself out of my comfort zone and pick it up some, but I'm not going to make myself finish it if I don't like the first 50 pages or so, because I knew early on that I wouldn't be a fan of this book. It's just so, so depressing. It's like the author thought up as many horrible things as she could and stuck it all into one book. I understand that that's the point to an extent, and I appreciated some of the issues she raised, but this just isn't what I'm looking for when I pick up a book. I'm much more interested in the list of research books she included at the end, and could totally see myself reading some of those and enjoying them a lot. The storytelling style also didn't work for me for some reason, and I struggled not having a single character to get invested in throughout the course of the book, as opposed to switching characters with each chapter. Though I did like seeing the different stories weave together throughout the generations, and I really liked learning more about Ghana. But overall, while I'm sure all the praise for this book is incredibly well-deserved, this just isn't the book for me. I think this is a good review um, in terms of like recognizing that reading is subjective and some people love fantasy, some people love literary fiction, some people read for escapism, some people read to learn more about our current world and I think that is totally fair. I do think the critique that the book is so depressing um, and that the author seems to have kind of cherry-picked horrible situations and put them in this book is kind of overlooking the fact that this is historical fiction based on real life events, that people were forcibly removed from their homelands, families were separated forever, that people were enslaved, that people endured incredibly horrific situations. Um, so that is a little bit there are many happy moments, uh, funny moments in the story. However, there are an incredible amount of heart-wrenching, horrifying situations because of the subject matter and that is based on fact. So I think for this reader, I would recommend reading for escapism and probably not picking up those other books as they mentioned because they are also not going to be uplifting and as they are research material, they're going to be nonfiction. So you can't really shy away from the fact that those things really happened. Next up is a book I read a few months ago. I don't think I discussed this on my channel, but that is Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. And this book I expect to see very, very mixed reviews about. Um, I really enjoyed this. It focuses on a woman who is caring for her mother who's aged and is suffering with dementia and now has forgotten a lot of things about her life and is also not able to care for herself independently anymore. The daughter really struggles with this as she finds it to be her obligation to care for her mother, um, but her mother was not always the kindest to her growing up. This book is an unexpected psychological thriller in some ways to me, and I really appreciated being caught completely off guard with everything that happens in this story. I'm excited to read some of these because I just know that some people are going to absolutely hate this book, um, which makes for fun, fun reviews, I think. Here we go. 1.5 stars. I'm not a fan of diaspora writers who've barely lived in India writing about it and talking about events like the Bombay riots when it isn't even relevant to the story. Everything about this seems so forced, like this novel is trying to be complex by adding in outrageous and mostly sexual lines in the middle of describing something mundane, or the way everything was described in such grotesque ways. Like yes, India is dirty and everything is covered in dust and there's stray dogs everywhere. We get it. Also, the mother-daughter relationship, which was supposed to be the main plot, was never developed on, and Tara describes how her mother neglected her, but never lets us know how she feels about that. It's just page after page of recounting everything her mother has done and the people she slept with and describing her body in a frankly disgusting detail. Wish Anne Vidoshi sticks to writing about New Jersey in the future because this was so, so annoying. I am not Indian. I've never lived in India. I've never been to India. I cannot comment on uh, the first few comments from this reviewer. There is a big ongoing debate about diaspora writers and what they should or should not write about. I'm not going to get into that, um, but I would say yes, the writer definitely did discuss India as sometimes being dirty or being noisy. Um, but it didn't seem to be to an inappropriate extent like in other books I've read. The book is very graphic when it comes to talking about the body, 
which is something I usually might be a little bit squeamish about, but for whatever reason, I didn't hate it in this book. Um, but that is definitely something to be aware of if you do not like that. And I personally found the relationship between the daughter and her mother to be very clear. I understood why she was upset with her mother, um, why she had certain issues with caring for her mother now um, and not addressing the past. I would definitely disagree with this reviewer that the plot, that the main focus of the mother-daughter relationship wasn't touched upon because I thought that was very, very clear in this book. Here's an interesting review. Um, the reviewer says, I don't know exactly what went wrong here for me. I love an unlikable female protagonist, or at least I thought I did, but maybe being likable for me is different than I thought it was. Now that I'm re-evaluating this, I'm noticing a pattern. In some of my favorite novels, the main characters are rude but funny and passionate about one thing or other, even if those passions are not necessarily healthy or good. I enjoy a protagonist who is widely flawed but interesting, inventive, non-self-pitying. Burnt Sugar's lead likes to focus on minute and dislikes everything. She disaffectedly describes a lot of in-detail descriptions, including medical terminology and cold, seemingly pointless descriptions of dying animals. She's a narrator who doesn't seem interested in anything at all. I can think of other books where the narrator hated the world around her, but was passionate about certain films, drugs, something. But this narrator is so completely empty. It just didn't work for me. I think it's really funny that the reviewer <laughs> kind of decided what sort of unlikable protagonists they like. Um, I didn't actually find the protagonist that unlikable. I don't know if that says something about me, but I really felt for her in this situation. She felt that she was betrayed in some way by time and by the health issues that her mother's facing. Um, and she is definitely self-pitying, but I think we all are sometimes. And in this book, it's very important that the protagonist was self-pitying because if she just let the past go by, then I mean, the story wouldn't have existed. Okay, last negative review for Burnt Sugar it says, I hated this book. I was hoping for some redemption in the end since it has been listed for several prizes, but I really hated it. I almost gave up several times. This book put me in a bad mood. <laughs> the characters were terrible people and there wasn't really a plot. This is a book where there isn't necessarily a plot, I suppose. The main themes are relationships and that doesn't necessarily mean the story is moving towards something. I don't think that all of the characters were terrible people. I mean, <laughs> I think there were a lot of morally gray characters, um, but there were decent people as well in the story, and I think they were just quite human in many regards. So I disagree with this review. It's interesting to me that none of these reviews mention the psychological thriller suspense aspects of the story. I don't know if that means that they didn't read the whole thing, um, and I'd be curious to know if reading the entire book would change their minds. Next up is a book that made me cry many, many times. I absolutely adored this book, and that is A Thousand Splendid Sons by uh, Khaled Husseini. And I'm just very curious to read the reviews on this one. This book is set in Afghanistan. We follow two women protagonists, and we see how their lives are so different as they're born decades apart, but also so incredibly similar and the oppression they face and how they form a relationship to survive together. I'm not sure what kind of negative reviews there could be on this book unless they're going to be that the book was really, really sad. Oh, this is another very highly rated book on Goodreads with 4.40 stars as the average review. So let's scroll through and find oh no this one looks kind of funny okay i'm just gonna read it it says oh god the tiny suicidal violin player in my head was added again so i did what i had to do i threw this darn book across the room and put him out of his misery this is the second and last book i will ever read of khaled Hussaini. the guy is more eeyore than eeyore everything that can go wrong does and then even gets worse this book, like The Kite Runner, is ridiculously depressing. I don't think there has been a more overrated author. <laughs> what did I say? I knew that people would pick it apart for being sad. I mean, yes, agreed. Horrible, horrible things happen in this book. But again, they are based on real events. 
Um, so to kind of sugarcoat them or make them out to be better than they are would do such a huge disservice to the women in this situation, to the women who experience them. Of course, the kite runner is focused on men. And I think A Thousand Splendid Sons is almost seen as the woman version of the kite runner. Um, a very, very different subject matter, but it seems like this reviewer and many others see it that way but I found it to be a completely unique storyline. All right, here's a slightly longer review um, that has an interesting mix of critiques in it. Uh, the reviewer says, I am sure that I need to explain why this book received only one star. Let me first say that I never cared for the majority opinion. More than likely, I am going to disagree with it to some degree. Now to the reason why I felt that this deserved a one. For one, can anyone explain to me what this book was about? I read the synopsis, hoping to find a story about war and survival, but all I read was loopholes and inconsistency. The poor character was terrible. I could not find any reason to care for any of the characters. Maybe it was a large print that contributed to the rating? I don't think that is a fair assumption though. I may reread it if someone can clearly define what the book was about. Although my rating will remain, I appreciate someone expressing what they enjoyed so much. As for me, it was boring, uninteresting, and overhyped. Oh well, another book that fell victim to lack of character development and sloppy consistency. Oh my goodness. Um, there's a lot to unpack here. It's a really interesting statement to say that this reviewer could not find a single reason to care for any of the characters um, and that it was not about war and survival because that's, that is the story. The women are both impacted by war. Um, there are scenes of them dodging bullets and dodging bombs as they're running to school or uh, running home from the grocery store. So there's definitely scenes of war. Perhaps this reviewer wanted something that was more in combat, which I don't think you should expect from the description of this book. I am shocked that this book could be called <laughs> boring and uninteresting though. It is about people's lives about oppressed women um, and about how they overcome abuse, how they overcome systematic oppression. Some characters are able to be educated and find escapism through through education, some find escapism through uh, marriage and through families, and some find it through religion. And I, I think that's really shocking, <laughs> um, honestly, that this person thought that there was a lack of character development and that it was just boring. <laughs> I have no words, really. Ooh, I had a feeling there would be some um, interesting people crawling out of the woodwork with this one because there are many, many sexist uh, and xenophobic comments that I'm just not even going to give a platform to but some are just shocking. The rest of the comments that are one stars seem to be focusing on um, rejecting the idea that women in Afghanistan are oppressed. Um, and to many of these comments, I would say, this is not a critique of Islam. Uh, this is specifically a, a cultural critique of experiences that Afghan women have faced and continue to face. In the story, we have women who decide for themselves to embrace the hijab, to embrace the niqab, and we have women who decide that is not for them. Um, and none of these women are condemned for their decisions by the author. Um, as a reader, you, you recognize that they are free to make those decisions. However, the author also addresses the forced covering of Afghan girls and women. So I think that's um, all of the comments that I'm going to talk about on this book because the rest are um, just not really about the book itself. So it seems like the main complaints of this book as predicted are that it's really sad and true. This video is going to be so long. I hope it's not boring. Last book I wanted to read some reviews for is Open Water by uh, Caleb Azuma Nelson. This book is a love story, but not just between two people, but also coming to terms with yourself and loving who you are and your identity and recognizing who you are in the world, essentially. I discussed this book a little bit on a previous video, so I'll also link that down below, but I really enjoy this book. It's very lyrical, very beautiful, 
and I also recognize why some people might not like it. I think that this is going to have some mixed reviews as well because of the writing style, the use of second person, you, which I appreciate some experimental writing. Oh, actually, maybe I'm going to eat my words because overall it has a 4.16 stars on Goodreads, but there are one star reviews, 132 one star reviews. Okay, this review is kind of funny, I think. Um, the reviewer says, I feel so bad giving this a one star, but seeing I am one of my minorities, this is 100% a case of it's not you, it's me. First of all, the second point of view threw me off right from the beginning, and there isn't much time to adjust as this is a novella. Second, I don't like reading long paragraphs. Third, the writing style is just too dramatic for my small, regular brain. This is such a funny review. Um, it really sounds like they feel horrible about giving it a one star. Like I said, yes, it is in second person, which is quite shocking and jarring, um, but intentionally so. I don't know what to say to the reviewer critiquing long paragraphs. Um, I don't remember them being exceptionally long. I mean, some are long, some are not so long, but like, it's like, I don't know, nothing wild. There are line breaks. Um, so that's kind of a funny comment to make and that the writing style is just too dramatic for them. Dramatic, I think what they're saying is too lyrical maybe and too, um, too many metaphors thrown in, which is true, is definitely accurate and it does take some getting used to. I do find with books that have more of that sort of experimental or uh, dramatic, as they say, writing style, I do often have to do some research on my own, which adds to the overall understanding of the novel, but of course can also take away from the book. This is a very short and to the point review. The reviewer says, my one and only one star rating. A guy with teenage angst and a chip on his shoulder falls in love with a girl and rambles on and on and on about it. Just dismal. Uh, this is really funny because it's simplifying, oversimplifying to such an extreme amount. Um, teenage angst and a chip on his shoulder. We're talking about racism, police brutality, and systematic oppression. Um, so I think teenage angst and a chip on his shoulder is a little questionable, um, and falling in love with a girl, that's true. We see their relationship go back and forth. It's very raw, very real. Some relationships have that very back and forth, will they, won't they element to them, and that is definitely the case in this story, um, but I would not say it is dismal or to over oversimplify it to this extent at all. Let's finish on this one. The reviewer says, I hated this book. It's so boring and pretentious. The author wants you to know that he's good with words and literary fiction. He doesn't shut up about rap music. I fairly enjoyed convenience store woman and normal people, so not having a plot is not a deal breaker for me. However, the book itself was a problem. He tried so hard to have deep characters and thought everyone would think this is a masterpiece about humans and grief. But the only master thing here is my hatred for this crap. All these hate comments made my battery die. <laughs> um, but this is just kind of a funny comment because again, there isn't really a critique of the story itself. Um, just <laughs> this is just really an angry <laughs> comment um again i think this is about the style of writing and the use of metaphors and kind of more poetic writing than prose usually has the comment about not shutting up about rap music is mm, a little misplaced, I think, because that is very intentional. The author uses a lot of cultural and pop cultural references that specifically tie into what the character is going through or experiencing and shows how the character falls back on pop cultural references to explain or to understand what he is experiencing himself. That is a wrap on this video. Um, I think it's going to be <laughs> way, way, way too long. So maybe I'll cut it back a little bit, but I hope you enjoyed watching this. I find them really amusing to watch myself. So hopefully this was somewhat entertaining. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Bye.
traumatic for my small regular brain. Luna's crying in her sleep, sorry. 